Okay, welcome to the program, and this is part two in my series honoring members of the military who have been awarded the Medal of Honor, which is the highest honor in the United States military. I went a little bit more into details on the background of the medal and why it's awarded in part one, and in part two, I'm going to get right into the recipients because that is the most important part. Okay, the first recipient is Patrick Henry Brady, Major, United States Army, 54th Medical Detachment, 67th Medical Group, 44th Medical Brigade, date of issue, October 9, 1969, location near Chu Lai, Republic of Vietnam, 6 January 1968, and the citation reads as follows. For conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity in action at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty, Major Brady distinguished himself while serving in the Republic of Vietnam, commanding a UH-1H ambulance helicopter, volunteered to rescue wounded men from a site in enemy-held territory, which was reported to be heavily defended and to be blanketed by fog. To reach the site, he descended through heavy fog and smoke and hovered slowly along a valley trail turning his ship sideward to blow away the fog with the backwash from his rotor blades. Despite the unchallenged, close-range enemy fire, he found the dangerously small site where he successfully landed and evacuated two badly wounded South Vietnamese soldiers. He was then called to another area completely covered by dense fog where American casualties lay only 50 meters from the enemy. Two aircraft had previously been shot down, and others made unsuccessful attempts to reach the site earlier in the day. With unmatched skill and extraordinary courage, Major Brady made four flights to this embattled landing zone and successfully rescued all the wounded. On his third mission of the day, Major Brady once again landed at a site surrounded by the enemy. The friendly ground force, pinned down by enemy fire, had been unable to reach and secure the landing zone. Although his aircraft had been badly damaged and his controls partially shot away during the initial entry into this area, he returned minutes later and rescued the remaining injured. Shortly thereafter, obtaining a replacement aircraft, Major Brady was requested to land in an enemy minefield where a platoon of American soldiers was trapped. The mine detonated near his helicopter, wounding two crew members and damaging his ship. In spite of this, he managed to fly six severely injured patients to medical aid. Throughout the day, Major Brady utilized three helicopters to evacuate a total of 51 seriously wounded men, many of whom would have perished without prompt medical treatment. Major Brady's bravery was in the highest traditions of military service and reflects great credit upon himself and the United States Army. The next recipient, James E. Livingston, Captain, United States Marine Corps, Company E, 2nd Battalion, 4th Marines, 9th Marine Amphibious Brigade, date of issue, April 14, 1970, location, Dai Du, Republic of Vietnam, May 2, 1968, and the citation reads as follows. For conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty while serving as commanding officer Company E in action against enemy forces, Company E launched a determined assault on the heavily fortified village of Dai Du, which had been seized by the enemy on the preceding evening, isolating a Marine company from the remainder of the battalion. Skillfully employing screening agents, Captain Livingston maneuvered his men to assault positions across 500 meters of dangerous open rice paddy while under intense enemy fire. Ignoring hostile rounds impacting near him, he fearlessly led his men in a savage assault against enemy emplacements within the village. While adjusting supporting arms fire, Captain Livingston moved to the points of heaviest resistance, shouting words of encouragement to his marines, directing their fire, and spurring the dwindling momentum of the attack on repeated occasions. Although twice painfully wounded by grenade fragments, he refused medical treatment and courageously led his men in the destruction of over a hundred mutually supporting bunkers, driving the remaining enemy from the positions, and relieving the pressure of the stranded Marine Company. As the two companies consolidated positions and evacuated casualties, Third Company passed through the friendly lines, launching assault on the adjacent village of Din Tu, only to be halted by a furious counterattack of an enemy battalion. Swiftly assessing the situation and disregarding the heavy volume of enemy fire, 
Captain Livingston, boldly maneuvered the remaining effective men of his company forward, joined forces with the heavily engaged Marines, and halted the enemy's counterattack. Wounded a third time and unable to walk, he steadfastly remained in the dangerously exposed area, deploying his men to more tenable positions and supervising the evacuation of casualties. Only when assured of the safety of his men did he allow himself to be evacuated. Captain Livingston's gallant actions uphold the highest traditions of the Marine Corps and United States Naval Service. The next recipient, Melvin Morris, Staff Sergeant, United States Army, 3rd Company, date of issue, March 18, 2014. Location, Chai Lang, Vietnam, September 17, 1969. And the citation reads as follows. Melvin Morris is being recognized for his valorous actions on September 17, 1969 while commanding the 3rd Company, 3rd Battalion of the 4th Mobile Strike Force near Chai Lang. Then, Staff Sergeant Morris led an advance across enemy lines to retrieve a fallen comrade and single-handedly destroyed an enemy force that had pinned his battalion from a series of bunkers. Staff Sergeant Morris was shot three times as he ran back toward friendly lines with the American casualties, but did not stop until he reached safety. The next recipient, Robert E. O'Malley. Corporal, United States Marine Corps, Company I, 3rd Battalion, 3rd Marine Regiment, 3rd Marine Division, date of issue, December 6, 1966, location, near Ang Quang Tu, South Vietnam, 18 August 1965, and the citation reads as follows. For conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity in action against the communist Viet Cong forces at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty, while leading his squad in the assault against a strongly entrenched enemy force, his unit came under intense small arms fire. With complete disregard for his personal safety, Sergeant O'Malley raced across an open rice paddy to a trench line where the enemy forces were located. Jumping into the trench, he attacked the Viet Cong with his rifle and grenades and singly killed eight of the enemy. He then led his squad to the assistance of an adjacent Marine unit, which was suffering heavy casualties. Continuing to press forward, he reloaded his weapon and fired with telling effect into the enemy emplacement. He personally assisted in the evacuation of several wounded Marines, and again regrouping the remnants of the squad, he returned to the point of the heaviest fighting. Ordered to an evacuation point by an officer, Sergeant O'Malley gathered his besieged and badly wounded squad and boldly led them under fire to a helicopter for withdrawal. Although three times wounded in the encounter and facing imminent death from a fanatic and determined enemy, he steadfastly refused evacuation and continued to cover his squad's boarding of the helicopters while, from an exposed position, he delivered fire against the enemy until his wounded men were evacuated. Only then, with his last mission accomplished, did he permit himself to be removed from the battlefield. By his valor, leadership, and courageous efforts in behalf of his comrades, he served as an inspiration to all who observed him and reflect the highest credit upon the Marine Corps and United States Naval Service. The next recipient, Ronald E. Rosser, Corporal, United States Army, Heavy Mortar Company, 38th Infantry Regiment, 2nd Infantry Division, date of issue, May 27, 1952, location, vicinity of Pongili, Korea. 12 January 1952, and the citation reads as follows. Corporal Rosser distinguished himself by conspicuous gallantry above and beyond the call of duty. While assaulting heavily fortified enemy hill positions, Company L, 38th Infantry Division, 38th Infantry Regiment, was stopped by fierce automatic weapons, small arms, artillery, and mortar fire. Corporal Rosser, a forward observer, was with the lead platoon of Company L when it came under fire from two directions. Corporal Rosser turned his radio over to his assistant and, disregarding the enemy fire, charged the enemy positions armed with only carbine and a grenade. At the first bunker, he silenced his occupants with a burst from his weapon. Gaining the top of the hill, he killed two enemy soldiers and then went down the trench, killing five more as he advanced. He then hurled his grenade into a bunker and shot two other soldiers as they emerged. Having exhausted his ammunition, he returned through the enemy fire to obtain more ammunition and grenades and charged his hill once more. Calling on others to follow him, he assaulted two more enemy bunkers. Although those who attempted to join him became casualties, Corporal Rosser once again exhausted his ammunition, obtained a new supply, 
and, returning to the hilltop a third time, hurled grenades into the enemy positions. During his heroic action, Corporal Rosser single-handedly killed at least 13 of the enemy. After exhausting his ammunition, he accompanied the withdrawing platoon, and though himself wounded, made several trips across open terrain still under enemy fire to help remove other men injured more seriously than himself. This outstanding soldier's courageous and selfless devotion to duty is worthy of emulation by all men. He has contributed magnificently to the highest standards of the military service. The next recipient, James M. Sprayberry, 1st Lieutenant, United States Army, Company D, 5th Battalion, 7th Cavalry, 1st Cavalry Division, date of issue October 9, 1969, location, Republic of Vietnam, 25 April 1968, and the citation reads as follows. For conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity in action at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty, Captain Sprayberry, United States Army, distinguished himself by exceptional bravery while serving as an executive officer of Company D. His company commander of the men were wounded and separated from the main body of the company. A daylight attempt to rescue them was driven back by the well-entrenched enemy heavy fire. Captain Sprayberry, a volunteer night patrol to eliminate the intervening enemy bunkers and to relieve the surrounded element. The patrol soon began receiving enemy machine gun fire. Captain Sprayberry quickly moved the men to protective cover and without regard for his own safety, crawled within close range of the bunker from which the fire was coming. He silenced the machine gun with a hand grenade, identifying several enemy positions nearby. Captain Sprayberry immediately attacked him with the rest of his grenades. He crawled back for more grenades and when two grenades were thrown at his men from from a position to the front, Captain Sprayberry, without hesitation, again exposed himself and charged the enemy-held bunker, killing its occupants with a grenade. Placing two men to cover his advance, he crawled forward and neutralized three more bunkers with grenades. Immediately thereafter, Captain Sprayberry was surprised by an enemy soldier who charged from a concealed position. He killed the soldier with his pistol and, with continuing disregard for the danger, neutralized another enemy in placement. Captain Sprayberry then established radio contact with the isolated men, directed them toward his position. When the two elements made contact, he organized his men into litter parties to evacuate the wounded. As the evacuation was nearing completion, he observed an enemy machine gun, a grenade. Captain Sprayberry returned to the rescue party, established security, and moved to friendly lines with the wounded. This rescue operation, which lasted approximately seven and a half hours, saved the lives of many of his fellow soldiers. Captain Sprayberry personally killed 12 enemy soldiers, eliminated two machine guns, and destroyed numerous enemy bunkers. Captain Sprayberry's indomitable spirit and gallant action at great personal risk to his life are in keeping with the highest traditions of military service and reflect great credit upon himself, his unit, and the United States Army. The next recipient is Kyle J. White, Sergeant, United States Army, Company C, 2nd Battalion Airborne, 503rd Infantry, 173rd Airborne Brigade, date of issue, May 13, 2014, location, Arnas, Afghanistan, November 9, 2007. And the citation reads as follows. Specialist Kyle J. White distinguished himself by acts of gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty while serving as a radio telephone operator with Company C, 2nd Battalion Airborne, 503rd Infantry Regiment, 173rd Airborne Brigade, during combat operations against an armed enemy in Nuristan Province, Afghanistan, on November 9, 2007. On that day, Specialist White and his comrades were returning to Bella Outpost from a Shura with Arnos Village Elders. As the soldiers traversed a narrow path surrounded by mountainous, rocky terrain, they were ambushed by enemy forces from elevated positions. Pinned against a steep mountain face, Specialist White and his fellow soldiers were completely exposed to enemy fire. Specialist White returned fire and was briefly knocked unconscious when a rocket-propelled grenade impacted near him. When he regained consciousness, another round impacted near him, embedding small pieces of shrapnel in his face. Shaking off his wounds, Specialist White noticed one of his comrades lying wounded nearby. Without hesitation, Specialist White exposed himself to enemy fire in order to reach the soldier and provide medical aid. After applying a tourniquet, Specialist White moved to an injured Marine, similarly providing aid and comfort until the Marine succumbed to his wounds. Specialist White then returned to the soldier and discovered that he had been wounded again. Applying his own belt as additional tourniquet, Specialist White was able to stem the flow of blood and save the soldier's life. Noticing that his and the other soldier's radios were interoperative, Specialist White exposed himself to enemy fire yet again in order to secure a radio from a deceased comrade. He then provided information and updates to friendly forces, allowing precision airstrikes to stifle the enemy's attack and ultimately permitting medical evacuation aircraft to rescue him 
his fellow soldiers, Marines, and Afghan Army soldiers. Specialist Kyle J. White's extraordinary heroism and selflessness above and beyond the call of duty are in keeping with the highest traditions of military service and reflect great credit upon himself, Company C, 2nd Battalion Airborne, 503rd Infantry Regiment, 173rd Airborne Brigade, and the United States Army. And the next recipient is Gordon R. Roberts, Specialist 4th Class, United States Army. Company B, 1st Battalion, 506th Infantry, 101st Airborne Division. Date of issue, March 2, 1971. Location, Phao Thien Province, Republic of Vietnam, 11 July 1969. And the citation reads as follows. For conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity in action at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty, Sergeant Roberts distinguished himself while serving as a rifleman in Company B during combat operations. Sergeant Roberts' platoon was maneuvering along a ridge to attack a heavily fortified enemy bunker position which had pinned down an adjoining friendly company. As the platoon approached the enemy positions, it was suddenly pinned down by heavy automatic weapons and grenade fire from camouflaged enemy fortifications atop the overlooking hill. Seeing his platoon immobilized and in danger of failing in its mission, Sergeant Roberts crawled rapidly toward the closest enemy bunker. With complete disregard for his safety, he leaped to his feet and charged the bunker, firing as he ran. Despite the intense enemy fire directed at him, Sergeant Roberts silenced the two-man bunker. Without hesitation, Sergeant Roberts continued his one-man assault on a second bunker. As he neared the second bunker, a burst of enemy fire knocked his rifle from his hands. Sergeant Roberts picked up a rifle, dropped by a comrade, and continued his assault. Silencing the bunker, he continued his charge against a third bunker and destroyed it with well-thrown hand grenades. Although Sergeant Roberts was now cut off from his platoon, he continued his assault against a fourth enemy emplacement. He fought through a heavy hail of fire to join elements of the adjoining company, which had been pinned down by the enemy fire. Although continually exposed to hostile fire, he assisted in moving wounded personnel from exposed positions on the hilltop to an evacuation area before returning to his unit. By his gallant and selfless actions, Sergeant Roberts contributed directly to the saving the lives of his comrades and served as an inspiration to his fellow soldiers in the defeat of the enemy force. Sergeant Roberts' extraordinary heroism and action at the risk of his life is in keeping with the highest traditions of military service and reflect great credit upon himself, his unit, and the United States Army. The next recipient is William Kyle Carpenter, Lance Corporal, United States Marine Corps, Company F, 2nd Battalion, 9th Marines. Date of issue, May 19, 2014. Location, Marja District, Helmand Province, Afghanistan, November 21, 2010. And the citation reads, For conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty while serving as an automatic rifleman with Company F, 2nd Battalion, 9th Marines, Regimental Combat Team 1, 1st Marine Division, Forward, 1 Marine Expeditionary Force, Forward, in Helmand Province, Afghanistan, in support of Operation Enduring Freedom on 21 November 2010, Lance Corporal Carpenter was a member of a platoon-sized coalition force comprised of two reinforced Marine squads partnered with an Afghan National Army squad. The platoon had established patrol base Dakota two days earlier in a small village in the Marja district in order to disrupt enemy activity and provide security for the local Afghan population. Lance Corporal Carpenter and a fellow Marine were manning a rooftop security position on the perimeter of Patrol Base Dakota when the enemy initiated a daylight attack with hand grenades, one of which landed inside their sandbag position. Without hesitation and with complete disregard for his own safety, Lance Corporal Carpenter moved toward the grenade in an attempt to shield his fellow Marine from the deadly blast. When the grenade detonated, his body absorbed the brunt of the blast, severely wounding him but saving the life of his fellow Marine. By his undaunted courage, bold fighting spirit, and unwavering devotion to duty in the face of almost certain death, Lance Corporal Carpenter reflected great credit upon himself and upheld the highest standards of the Marine Corps and the United States Naval Service. The next recipient is Ty M. Carter, Specialist, United States Army, B Troop, 3rd Squadron, 61st Cavalry Regiment. Date of issue, August 26, 2013. Location, Outpost Keating, Nuristan Province, Afghanistan, October 3, 2009. And the citation reads, 
for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty, Specialist Ty M. Carter distinguished himself by acts of gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty while serving as a scout with Bravo Troop, 3rd Squadron, 61st Cavalry Regiment, 4th Brigade Combat Team, 4th Infantry Division during combat operations against an armed enemy in Kemdesh District, Nuristan Province, Afghanistan, on October 3, 2009. On that morning, Specialist Carter and his comrades awakened to an attack of an estimated 300 enemy fighters occupying the high ground on all four sides of combat outpost Keating, employing concentrated fire from recoilless rifles, rocket-propelled grenades, anti-aircraft machine guns, mortar, and small arms fire. Specialist Carter reinforced a forward battle position, ran twice through a 100-meter gauntlet of enemy fire to resupply ammunition, and voluntarily remained there to defend the isolated position. Armed with only a M4 carbine rifle, Specialist Carter placed accurate deadly fire on the enemy, beating back the assault force and preventing the position from being overrun over the course of several hours. With complete disregard for his own safety and in spite of his wounds, he ran through a hail of enemy rocket-propelled grenade and machine gun fire to rescue a critically wounded comrade who had been pinned down in an exposed position. Specialist Carter rendered life-extending first aid and carried the soldier to cover. On his own initiative, Specialist Carter again maneuvered through the enemy fire to check on a fallen soldier and recover the squad's radio, which allowed them to coordinate their evacuation with fellow soldiers. With teammates providing covering fire, Specialist Carter assisted in moving the wounded soldier 100 meters through the withering enemy fire to the aid station and before returning to his fight. Specialist Carter's heroic actions and tactical skill were critical to the defense of the combat outpost Keating, preventing the enemy from capturing the position and saving the lives of his fellow soldiers. Specialist Ty M. Carter's extraordinary heroism and selflessness above and beyond the call of duty are in keeping with the highest traditions of military service and reflect great credit upon himself, Bravo Troop, 3rd Squadron, 61st Cavalry Regiment, 4th Brigade Combat Team, 4th Infantry Division, and the United States Army. That's all the recipients that I have time for today. I'm going to do this on a weekly basis until I have covered all of our Medal of Honor recipients. I believe they deserve the recognition, even if they probably would disagree with me. Their actions are heroic and they stand for the freedom which we all enjoy in America and the United States today. Please let me know if you have any comments, feedbacks, or suggestions. Thank you again for listening, and please check back soon.